uh, you up on trades and why you move? You ain't designed to lose. Find you jumping over seemingly nothing, racking up points, makes the game a little more fun to watch. Can drop release. We started with the mock draft and now we making a mockery of the leaderboard. Quite obviously not a scrub to start an institute. Make evaluations like a commissioner do. It's to the point your wife make you watch in their different room. Update your roster and pick and choose when you get some news. Not much that we enjoy more than sifting through sifting through new statistics to make it to our end zones through different groups, universities, institutes, down to homies who click in groups. I introduce you to the Stewart JT group. Jumping into the NFC North division, be interested. They're playing the NFC, um, excuse me, NFC South and the AFC West. The Bears, let's start off with them. They're plus 400 on DraftKings and plus 350 on FanDuel. I love that plus 400 to win the division. I, I just think that's a, a fairly good number for a team that's going to have a shot. Over under a seven and a half currently. Vegas is feeling the over at minus 135 on DraftKings, minus 118 on FanDuel, unders plus 115 and minus 104. I know I'm probably way higher on the Bears than you are, John. So let me hear your Bears rant about how you don't think they're going to be good. <sighs> I, I'm going to be – I'm I, here's the thing. I'm going to go 8-9 this year only because they – they won. They lost so many games by like one score games and last minute second field goals, and last second touchdowns, and you know, they let so many games fall through their fingertips. This lightly, this roster is slightly improved, but I'm not expecting miracles. But I mean, eight and nine is where I'm at. I don't think they're a playoff team yet, but I think they're. Yeah, I, I'm not sure. This is a make or break year for Fields. Let's get that straight right away. If he comes in now with the improvements they've made, not that they're not that they brought it in the whole world, but DJ Moore and. Uh, Decent running backs, bringing them Roshan to, to complement the 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 you know the the Khalil Herbert and stuff. But this team is it's not a ter- terribly terribly hard schedule. They have this is almost set up for them to kind of like make a breakthrough right now. If 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 jo- Justin Fields comes out there and trips over his feet this year, I think they're going to have to make a decision on moving on from, to the the next quarterback for the future. But eight and nine, I don't think is that bad. I think that's a pretty fair assessment for someone who is not a Justin Fields guy or a or a Bears fan for that matter. I, I, I just want the Bears to move to Arlington Heights and sell the team and kind of just start from scratch as a whole franchise. But they've been nothing but an embarrassment for the city for a long time for Bears fans anyway. So. Uh, where are you at, Justin? Uh, Justin JT, because I'm, I'm a little bit higher on the Bears. I feel like the schedule works out for them. Like you said, I think it's an easier schedule, uh, which I think benefits them. I've got them at ten and seven on first glance. I think they're a nine and eight, ten and seven team. I think ten and seven's high side. I will be honest. I think ten and seven's high side. I think they're you're probably more in that eight and nine, nine and eight uh, is kind of where they go. But again, I think they're maybe one of those teams that end up with a better record than maybe how good the team is, just because of the way it kind of worked out. I mean, I've got them winning some games that I think you probably have them losing. I had them winning at Washington. I think that's a, easily a game they could lose at Washington. Um, I had them winning at home against the Broncos. That's probably going to be a toss up game. Um, I actually have them. Beating the Packers, I think that I'm splitting with the Packers. I actually had them winning at home against the Lions and the Falcons. I think those are two real big toss-up games. If I'm leaning right now, I'm leaning the over on the Bears just because of that seven and a half number. I think they can get to eight wins. I think eight and nine is definitely reasonable. Yes. Obviously, my, minus one thirty-five. I like the minus one eighteen on FanDuel. I don't love. I wish it was more even money on the FanDuel, but I don't. Eight minus one eighteen at seven and a half. I'm probably taking them for the over because I think this team can get to nine or ten wins, and I think eight is super reasonable. And again, I'm taking an outside shot at plus four hundred for them to win the division. Everything falls apart. Everybody else they win on a crazy tiebreaker where they have the same record as the Lions and the Packers, and somehow they score more points and they ended up they end up getting the tiebreaker. So that's obviously a long shot bet, but I don't mind that if you're trying to get some a little bit higher odds, taking a plus 400 at the Bears to win the division. I don't think they win a division, but I I, I think they're going to make some improvements. But, uh, you know, it's, it's a fair assessment. Uh, I'll take that. 
I just like the I like the high odds on that if I got a shot. I don't think they win the division, but I like the money return on that for what you have to put into it. Uh, Lions, now this is the favorite to win the division. Uh, everybody's kind of darling here of late. They're plus 130 on DraftKings, plus 140 on FanDuel. Over under right now for the Lions is nine and a half, uh, plus one hundred on DK, minus one twenty two on FanDuel. So they're kind of split on that nine and a half. The under is minus one twenty, and then plus one hundred. So this one again, a team where a lot of people are high on this team. So a lot of people are taking the over. I don't think Vegas feels like it's as, as much of a gimme as everybody else does. Fairly tough schedule. Not super, super difficult there, there because of the other uh, divisions they're playing. I got them 10 and 7. I think they go over. I really like the 9.5 at plus 100. I'm jumping on that at, at plus 100 of the even money there, uh, over 9.5. I got them 10 and 7. This, I, what do you think? It kind of, I could go either way on them. Uh, I got them at 9 and 8. I, I'm, I'm like, I, I just, how will the Lions figure out how to mess this up? That's everybody knows Dan Campbell. Everybody loves him. Everybody loves an underdog. The Lions just hate winning. I, I don't. I don't. You know, does Goff regress this year? Is he? Will, will he be able to keep up the same numbers he had last year? It just seems like something's going to go wrong with this team. I don't, that's why it's nine and eight for me. I just don't see them like making this humongous improvement. Now they're going to get James William back in what week seven or week eight? I forgot what how many. What he gets suspended for six games or eight yeah, games? Six or something games. Like that. Yeah, six games. I think. But. I just feel like there's, for whatever reason, the Lions just can't help tripping over their feet. Now, everybody's rooting for Dan Campbell, like I said. I, I really hope that he, the Lions just finally get everything together, but I just feel like there's a couple things that are going to go wrong this year, and they're going to have to move on to the next quarterback. And I don't know why I have such a, you know, the, the rain cloud over the Lions organization, but they just, they they, they do it to you. It's not like they're, they're not. They're just bad. They just they just can't seem to. And, I, and they're on the top of that. Is Hennon Hooker that much better than Jared Goff? I feel like Hennon Hooker is like a Jared Goff type player. I, I I don't I don't get like how he's so much better than Jared Goff. He's going to come in and like change the franchise. I understand they got him late. You know they got him a decent draft capital so they can wait on him if if Goff doesn't uh, you know pan out. But if they did move on to Hennon Hooker, how how much do you see this team improving? Yeah, I think I think they're they're going with Goff. I feel like they think they're a win now team. I think Rodgers moving on to the Jets, Packers won't be as good. You know the Vikings are going to have some regression. Uh, the Bears are going to be better than they have been. I think the Lions are looking at this season as this is our chance, guys. We can win the division, make the playoffs, get a home playoff game possibly. I think they're I think they're all in on this season. I. Again, the schedule kind of lines up with them playing the uh, AFC South where they can pile together some wins there against the Saints and Falcons and all those guys. Again, I, I have a hard time feeling this team puts it all together all of a sudden and gets 11 or 12 wins. I had them 10 at 7. I felt like 10 and 7 was solid. I think they can do that. But, again, I would not be surprised like you if they blow their opportunities and next thing you know they're 7 and 10 or 8 and 9 and everyone thought they were winning this division – and they blow like perfect opportunities to do it. I, I think they're a favorite to win the division. I like them to win the division over the Bears, but I don't think it's going to be that. I mean, I easily can see these teams having the same record and it coming down to a tiebreaker. And that's why I said I like the plus 400 uh, on the Bears there. I'd probably take the over on wins uh, just because of, of, of the even money there. Yeah. Packers are The Packers are a team, you know, people down on them, no Rodgers. Uh, Jordan Love comes in. Do you like Jordan Love? Do you not like Jordan Love? Right now they're plus 500 to win the division on DraftKings, 350 on FanDuel, sitting at seven and a half wins, pretty even there, plus 100 and minus 122. The unders minus 120 and plus 100. So they're a little bit on each side of that. Seven and a half wins. I was nowhere near a seven and a half win, but I guess I'm not a Jordan Love guy. I just feel like Aaron Rodgers was kind of – I just can't tell if it's one of those situations where Aaron Rodgers was holding this team back because of all the off-the-field drama – or if it's one of those situations where everyone comes together and they play a million times better because there is no Aaron Rodgers, or it's like we look at it and go, oh, no, Aaron Rodgers was literally carrying this team, and now they fall apart. There's There, there are some players that carry their team, and there's, you know, there are some teams that, that the team carries their quarterback. I feel like Jared Goff's team, that gets he gets carried by his team, and I feel like Aaron Rodgers was carrying the Packers. 
And I just don't think that Jordan Love's going to come in here and carry this team by himself either. I don't, I don't see it happening. I, I, you know, they still got Aaron Jones. You got Christian Watson, who I think Aaron Rodgers turned Christian Watson into a star. I think you're due for some serious regression because Rodgers is able to find Christian Watson across on these these slant routes where where he saw those things happen. He saw those things develop. Romeo Dubs, Jalen Reed, you know, Grant Dubois, the Dontarian Wicks, none of that stuff from Muslito for me on this on this team. I think they're they're gonna be a team that is in for a I, I got him at seven and ten, and that's being super generous. I can see this team being five and twelve, to be honest with you. Yeah, I agree with you. I'm taking the plus 100 on FanDuel at the under seven and a half wins. I had this team at four and 13. I think they can sneak out another one in there, maybe get a get a fifth or a sixth win. I don't see that this team wins eight. I just don't see it. I just don't think this team is that good. No. I think they have enough holes. I think they were. I think they've been masking it the last couple of years. I think they've been, you know, having better regular season records than the actual team is. So I'm I'm out on the Packers. Uh, Vikings to win the division plus two fifty. DraftKings three thirty on Fanduel over eight and a half wins. Mm-hmm. Vegas is leading the over at minus one thirty and minus one fifteen. The unders plus one ten and minus one oh five. John, I think this team regresses from last year. I still think they're a decent team though. They got enough offensive power. I've got them going ten and seven, and that's where I have this division. That's why I say I'm liking the Bears on that division winner because I feel like. This has got 10 and 7, 9 and 8 written all over the Bears, the Lions, and the uh and the Vikings. And I just feel like it's gonna come down to some tiebreaker. And so I want the higher odds if I can get that, get it on a tiebreaker. I got a nine and eight. I just feel like it's a tough schedule. They got a bad defense and possibly losing Dalvin Cook would be catastrophic for this team. So I got them at nine and eight, and that's with Dalvin Cook. So I'm I mean, I can literally see them going seven and nine or, or uh seven and ten. Or six and eleven if they lose to Alvin Cook. I, I just, I just don't think that this team was, was but is that? I don't think they're that. I don't think they're as good as that. Everybody makes them out to be. They, yeah, they, I, they, go ahead. I agree. I got, I got them ten and seven, but that was me being generous. I think they have a ton of toss up games on there, like you said. If they don't have Dalvin Cook, how does that affect them? Their defense is, has not been good. Uh, I got them ten and seven right now. But this is a team where if I'm getting more money to take the under, which you are here at eight and a half, I would. I'm probably not taking it, but I would. If I'm leaning it, I'm probably leaning it at that because I could see this team being an eight nine team. Absolutely, eight yeah. nine nine and eight. I, like I said, there's a lot of swing games on their schedule, and I gave them more of those swing games than they probably should get. To be honest with you, yeah. Um, right. I had them winning a couple games that they could possibly lose. So I, I definitely I, I'm down on them a little bit. I think they're I think them and the Bears are slightly worse than the Lions. I think the Lions are a little bit better, both of them, but I don't think there's that much of a difference between any of these teams. Because here's the thing I think. I like the offense on all three of those teams. I think they all have terrible defenses. And that's where I just don't know. You, are we going to get in that situation like last year where the, those teams were giving up 40 points a game on defense and didn't even matter if their offense put up 35, they still lost. So that's why I feel like those teams really could go any way depending on whose defense improves more than the other ones. I can't comment um, on here. I see Cody saying the Bears aren't either. Let's make a bet, John. <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's I'm not, a, I, <laughs> I'm not a betting man, but if I was, uh, it is what it is. I'll uh, – I, I I'm just not. I don't see the I don't see the Bears just becoming this 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 piece that everybody wants them to be. But I'll, I'll we'll talk about some bets here, Cody, Cody, in a little bit. Yeah, we yeah we put it on uh, Cody up there. He's not he's not a Bears guy. He also uh, thanks for jumping on Cody because he says nothing better than the stew on lunch break. So that's always good. Getting the you know we try to get a little early morning show for you guys here this afternoon. Uh, you up on trades and why you move? You ain't designed to lose. Find you jumping over seemingly nothing. Racking up points makes the game a little more fun to watch. Can drop release. We started with the mock draft and now we making a mockery. 